bridge. All he can do is squirt his sperm into the entrance. The female will raise her brood in the safety of her shell, while the male must cope with the dangerous world outside. But there is a definite advantage to being so big. He picks up shells to pick up females. Passing females are escorted by the male to his collection of shells. He shows off the accommodations, inviting her to move in. The more shells he has, the more females he can house in his harem. But building a harem from scratch is tiring and time-consuming. It's easier to raid those nearby plundering shells, and kidnapping females. For the many different cichlids who evolved into miniatures, these shells provide a haven. But just occasionally, they can become traps. The water cobra has evolved here in Tanganyika alongside the cichlids, and for the first year of its life, it is small enough to get inside the shells. Already, its venom is as potent as an adult's. One bite could kill a human. Millions of years ago, the cobra left the land to hunt in the lake, and now feeds almost entirely on fish. Water cobras are not the most serious threat to this cichlid's harem. He is surrounded, but not by his females. They're tucked inside their shells. His harem is being raided by midget males. While the harem master evolved into a giant, some males of the same species stay tiny and mimic the females. These transvestite dwarves, too puny to collect shells themselves, try to sneak a mating where they can. Ganging together increases their chances. They're so small, they can fit inside the shells and mate the females undisturbed. The success of their raids bonds the tiny males to each other, and the gang turns their mob tactics to another pressing concern, filling their bellies. The young of whole nesting cichlids are ideal prey for the mob. Parents will fight to protect their young, but the sheer number of raiders can easily overwhelm them. As the mob approaches a colony of whole nesters, the vigilant parents flash their fins, signaling their brood to retreat to the deepest part of the nest. In the middle of the colony, defending parents from all sides keep the raiders on the move. All the mob can do is hit and run. But nests at the edge of the colony are at serious risk. A whole brood can be devoured in a matter of seconds. A 
parent's valiant defense of its young is not really what you expect from a fish. But cichlids feel the bonds of family strongly. The emperors have stepped up their defense now that their eggs have hatched. But the mob is quick to join forces with other thieves, if it means a chance at an emperor's nest. The giant cichlid will dig out a hole, using that versatile mouth as both shovel and bucket. Then it moves its wriggling brood to safety, mouthful by mouthful. Taking their young into their mouths was a small evolutionary step. Keeping them there was a breakthrough. It combined the cichlid's best asset, that adaptable mouth, with their greatest talent caring for their young. The results have been amazing. As both nest and nursery, mom's mouth proved to be the safest place in the lake. For as long as a month, mothers will shelter their young this way, protecting them during the most vulnerable times of their lives. Mouth brooding has been so successful that over a thousand species of cichlids everywhere now raise their young this way. A pair spawns, the colorful male and plain female stimulating each other towards this consummate act. As soon as she lays a few eggs, the mother sucks them up. So eager is she to get them into the safety of her mouth, she leaves little time for the male to fertilize them. So the male flashes his egg dummies, bright patches of color on his fin that mimic the female's own eggs. She tries in vain to pick them up, and each time she does, she gets a mouthful of 